that Uganda has been one of the countries uh, in Africa that's been most affected by persistent political violence in the last 30 years. So as we got to thinking about sort of the dynamics and the relationships between food insecurity and conflict, uh, one of the things that, that, that caused myself and my collaborators to think about was that we really needed to know a lot more about the ground level dynamics. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to take all this stuff, so you know, food prices, uh, labor market dynamics, uh, violence in the region, and we're trying to understand it through a framework called coupled natural and human systems analysis, uh, which attempts to identify the, the complex linkages between these different factors uh, at, a, at a slightly more human scale, the scale of an ecosystem, you might say. So in this case, the ecosystem is um, the Lake Victoria Basin. Lake Victoria is the second largest lake in the world and the largest lake in Africa. And it um, provides a lot of different ecosystem services that are important to humans. In the 1950s, the lake was seen as um, an important source of income. And it was proposed that, um, that the Nile perch fish, which is native to the region, um, but not to the lake, be introduced to the lake. Some would argue that um, the introduction of the Nile perch was really a boon to the human population. It provides a huge source of income. Um, it does not provide a lot of food security for people who live around the lake because the vast majority of Nile perch is put on an airplane and shipped immediately to Europe. And that's one of the questions that we're interested in answering. There's, um, if, if the Nile perch population has taken over the populations of fish that used to provide food security. What has happened to sort of the nutritional status of people around the lake or, the, or their food security is sort of the, the better way to, to look at it. And that's one of, the, um, one of the smaller questions that is sort of feeding into our larger question, which is what is the effect of um, human fishing on the lake and changes in the lake ecology on overall food security and sort of social well-being and civil conflict uh, in the Lake Victoria region? So GIS uh, stands for Geographic Information Systems, and uh, it's, a, it's a technology for understanding, uh, cataloging, and uh, collecting and displaying and analyzing data that's, that's geographically, geographically explicit. When you start seeing your data on a map, it's pretty incredible, and some people did pick it up a little quicker than others, and it was really interesting to see when people would have a light bulb moment. That light bulb would come on and they would think, I can put my data into this and, and different things like that and sort of trying to finish the module really, really quickly so they could put their own data in and play with it. We would stand behind one or two computers and help the scientists. And I had these two very serious men. Um, and, you know, I, I guess <laughs> I tried to joke around with them a little bit. Um, but they were taking it very seriously. They really valued the, the software we brought over. But then um, once they saw the projections go up on the screen as well, they started laughing and smiling. And they were pointing out all the different towns they could recognize in Uganda. The end goal for this, obviously, is to do science that, that really informs policy making. And some of that involves consulting, but some of that also involves just doing good science, collaborating on a good research project so that we have a better understanding of what the interrelationship between uh, food prices in the market in Kampala and fishing effort on the lake looks like. We have a better understanding of how violence in the north related to Joseph Kony and the Lord's Resistance Army affects fishing effort and unemployment in the south. Or just knowing those things is useful, right? But they're much more useful if we can say, okay, now based on that information, how are we going to design social safety nets? Or how are we going to address dynamics in the fishery in a way that that information can make outcomes better for the people who are directly involved?